Our next guest says that we're the healthiest and safest human beings who've ever walked the planet, yet our irrational fears often get the best of us. Daniel Gardner is the author of The Science of Fear. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning. There is a lot to be afraid of. You have child abductions, school shootings, terrorism. Why do you call them irrational fears? Well, the question is whether the fear is in proportion to the reality. And in the case of, for instance, school shootings, uh, the fear is out of proportion to the reality, grossly out of proportion. If you recall the, the time around the Columbine Massacre, I mean, the, the level of fear was extraordinary. Three quarters of American parents feared that this could happen in their school. Half of American parents feared that this would happen to their children. In reality, what, what the statistics showed was that the chance of any child being murdered in school was infinitesimal. It was microscopic. And at the same time, school violence was actually dropping, not increasing. So in fact, we all got it wrong, terribly wrong. But what about something like 9-11? I mean, I work in the news. I see these things all the time. But after 9-11, I was messed up for a little while. How, yeah. how can you not be? Oh, absolutely. It's perfectly understandable. In the book, I describe, uh, I say that there are basically three factors at work in our, our risk perceptions. Uh, number one is the media. Obviously, we, I'm a journalist. We have to take some responsibility. Sure. Uh, also, what I call fear marketers, individuals and organizations who promote fear, profit from fear. But most importantly, it's psychology. Uh, psychologists have done a lot of work about risk perception, trying to figure out exactly how, why it is we're triggered to fear some things and not worry about others, and how sometimes we can get those things wrong. And if you look at 9/11, the events of 9/11, it was it is hard to imagine an event that could uh, more could more influence our intuitive sense of fear of dread. But you have a, a good example of why we sometimes do the wrong things because of these fears. After 9/11, a lot of people chose to drive rather than fly and that actually put them in more danger. There are serious consequences to getting risk wrong. Flying is a lot safer than driving, but of course after 9-11, for very good human reasons, we felt afraid to fly. But then we didn't feel afraid to drive. We got into our cars because they were familiar and comfortable, and we thought we were safer. We weren't. And as a result of this, because you have millions of Americans switching from flying to driving, you saw a spike in traffic fatalities that lasted for one year, for as long as this switch from, from flying to driving lasted. And according to one researcher's estimate, 1,595 Americans actually lost their lives as a direct result of that irrational fear. That's six times the number of Americans who are actually on the planes on September 11th. So in your book, you came up with a formula to fight these irrational fears. Tell me about that. Well, cognitive psychologists say that we have basically two minds at work. There's a conscious mind that can be rational and understands numbers and all that, that, those good things. Uh, then there's also your unconscious mind that uses all these other mechanisms to make decisions. That unconscious mind can go wrong. Often works, but can go wrong. You mean listening to your gut? And we tend to listen to our gut. The so psychologists have also shown that we, all, we tend to listen to our gut. We don't stop and think about our intuitions and ask ourselves, do we really have evidence? Does this actually make sense? Is it a rational fear? And what I suggest is people have to learn about the psychology and they have to stop and learn this habit of thinking about their intuitions. You say use reason, examine the evidence, calculate and consider. In the last seconds, what is the most important thing to consider? Well, I think the most important thing to consider is this. We're the, we are literally the luckiest, we are the healthiest, the safest people who ever lived. Uh, we should be profoundly grateful for uh, the safety and health in which we're, which we're blessed. Well said. Daniel Gardner, thank you so much.